This is a new series I'm starting where I'm just working on routes that I'm building. Right now I'm working on the Allentown route that I built in the past and trying to extend it to Emmaus. Now I found out that on Google Earth, if you hover the mouse over an area, you can tell its actual elevation. So that will come in handy in making sure the tracks and the roads are the proper elevation. Okay, right now I'm going through all the tracks and raising them to their proper elevation. We're going to start at uh, Allentown near the Merchant Square Mall. This is the 12th and Voltee Street Railroad Crossing. Okay, let's raise this track to its proper elevation above sea level. It'll start out looking weird, but once I get all the track sections lifted to their proper height, it'll look way more realistic. It'll hopefully look almost like the actual section of track I'm trying to replicate. By the way, this is the Harrisburg line. It runs from Allentown to Harrisburg. And in this direction, the tracks lead to the Allentown yard. This is the last railroad crossing between Merchant Square Mall and the Allentown Train Yard. As you can see right here, I need to lift these tracks up a little bit. About 79 meters. Now, I'm going to lift the roads up later, but I'm focusing on the track first. This bridge crosses the Lehigh River on its way to the Allentown Yard. I plan on adding the river later after I expand the scenery. Right now though, as far as scenery is concerned, I'm focusing on the Emmaus area. After I expand the scenery some more, I will eventually uh, finish the scenery in the Allentown area. Now I'm not sure how to scale Google Earth is, so just to be on the safe side, I'm going to place a train car underneath this bridge to make sure it fits, and if not, I'll adjust it ever so slightly. Sometimes when modeling based on Google Earth or Google Maps, I find that some sections of road or track are slightly out of alignment. I'm going to fix the adjustment of this bridge later when I uh, come back to the Allentown area, because like I said earlier, right now I'm just focusing on the tracks, and then I'll focus on the scenery in the Emmaus area. Speaking of Emmaus, let's go there real quick. This is Emmaus, Pennsylvania, which I still haven't finished yet. A lot of the scenery here is placeholder until I can get it finished. This is the South 6th Street crossing. Right now I'm setting up the trigger distance for the railroad crossings. In this case, the South 6th Street crossing. Now, these are estimates based on the distance I usually see the crossing activate at when I rail fan in that area. This crossing usually activates while the train is passing underneath the South 4th Street Bridge when traveling westbound. And when traveling eastbound, it usually activates after the driver starts blowing his horn for the 7th Street Crossing. And as far as the 7th Street Crossing is concerned, uh, when traveling eastbound, it usually activates somewhere between the time the train finishes exiting the curve and uh, the crossing. So this is a bit of an estimate here. Well, actually, it's not even really an estimate. It's more of a guess. I'm going to start at half of the distance between the crossing and the curve and then correct it as I go along. So this crossing is going to have to be tested later as far as the trigger distance is concerned. When traveling westbound though, it usually activates after the train starts blowing its horn for the South 6th Street crossing. Alright, now I'm going to set 
this stop sign up so that it can stop the traffic. Now there's no way to really program a stop sign to stop the cars in this game, so you have to pretty much improvise here. What I'm doing is I'm using a traffic stopper and I'm setting it for the same channel as the TRC crossing so that the cars will stop if the crossing activates because if I allow them to go, they're going to drive into the intersection and drive into a car that's already waiting for the crossing and then once they pile up enough, they'll just go through the crossing. I don't know why that happens, it's a weird glitch this game has. So instead, I'm going to have them stop at the stop sign when the crossing activates. It turns out the ATLS slave can also control the TRC traffic stoppers. So, I'm going to set up an ATLS system to stop the cars. Each route should last for 5 seconds. That'll give the car just enough time to go through before it activates again, stopping the car behind it. Most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't activate enough to stop the next car. So a group of cars will still get through, but at least some of the cars will stop at a stop sign, so it's somewhat realistic. Now I'm going to attach an invisible track to this traffic stopper and a traffic slave on the same channel as the controller. Set it to the same channel. It doesn't really matter which of the two routes you set it to unless you're having an all-way stop intersection. Then it would matter. So it can be either one or two. Now I also need triggers to, tr uh, to make them stop whenever the crossing is activated and until the gates go back up. So I'm going to put two triggers here to turn the stop sign off so it will switch back to normal. Put those on channel 2 as well. Now for the activation locations. Remember, the South 6th Street crossing usually activates while the train is crossing underneath the 4th Street bridge, so that would be where I would place this trigger as well for the stop signs. And um, when traveling eastbound, it's pretty much different every time. Okay, so I'm going to measure the distance that I decided for this crossing. Somewhere around here. And then place a trigger here too as well. Now, these signals I've been using as placeholders until I can get the correct one. The signals that need to go here have to have a nameplate because th these signals actually are named. They're named 291W, 292W, 291E, and 292E. 29 stands for milepost 29, 1 means main 1, and 2 means main 2. And of course, E means eastbound and W means westbound. These signals and signal parts are from jointed rail. But luckily, they're also on the download station. Now, in real life, the ladder for the signal is facing a different way, but you gotta make do with what's available in this game. Now, on one side, I use a signal that has a pole to support it, and on the other side, I use one that does not come with the pole so it can be mounted onto the other side, just like in real life. Here's a picture of the signal for reference. This house looks like some of the houses located on Jubilee Street near South 6th Street. So I'm using it as a stand-in. In most cases, you're likely not going to find an exact replica of the specific house you need, so... A lot of times you have to just make do with what's available in the game. Not only that, but going on the download station and searching house, looking for every single house in uh, existence and comparing them against the house you're trying to replicate, that would take way too long. So I just get a small collection of generic looking houses and I place them on the um, sidewalk. 
Now, anything that's going to be placed near the tracks has to be very high in detail because obviously you wouldn't want low detail scenery right next to the tracks. That's something you'd likely see as you're riding in the train. Or, in this case, um, placing the camera next to the tracks to watch the train go by because this is one of those automatic rail fanning routes. So yeah, you want the houses near the tracks to be high in detail. Once you get like a block or two away from the tracks though, you can start putting low poly scenery down. Now, if you have like a huge hole in the ground like this when making scenery, what I usually do to fill that gap is to place down a bunch of invisible tracks temporarily, lay them next to each other, just like this. And then once I have enough tracks laid down, I'm going to raise them using the get vertex height and then setting them to that height. This will help fill in gaps in the um, terrain. Once I have all the tracks that I need, I just fill in the gap using the fill tool. And now you have a hill. Now, of course, the hill is a little too high in some cases, or too low in some cases, and I'll use the fill gap for the splines that are on that hill to fix that. Of course, afterwards I delete the tracks because sometimes the game goes crazy with all those invisible tracks laying around doing nothing. In fact, it once went crazy and deleted all of the data that I had on a specific route after doing that. So make sure you delete those tracks after you use them. Now for this corner house on the corner of the intersection, I'm going to need a blue-ish house. I'm probably not going to find a blue townhouse, so I'm just going to look for a blue house in general. Because <laughs> so few people have made high detailed townhouses for this game. It's weird too because townhouses are one of the most common types of houses in the suburban area of the Lehigh Valley. You see them all the time in places like Bethlehem, Easton, etc. Okay, I managed to find a blue house, though it wasn't a townhouse. But like I said, sometimes for this game you have to make do with what you have available. Now, to make it look like people actually live here, I'm going to place some cars in these parking lots. What in the world? Why is that car so small? <laughs> well, I guess I can pass as a toy car. <laughs> in fact, to this scale, it probably could be a toy car. Anyway, I'm looking for a Hyundai car because uh, the first car that I saw parked in this parking lot on the Google Maps was a Hyundai. Speaking of Hyundai, I actually lost my job over a Hyundai car back when I was a traffic controller. You see, when controlling traffic, you have to speak over the radio to your partner to tell them which was the last car you sent through so they know which car to look for and when it's safe to send traffic on their side of a construction zone. But the guy that I worked with, he could not tell the difference between a Hyundai and a Honda. So he kept calling the Hyundai cars a Honda and, he, and he'd be like, okay, the last car I sent by was a blue Honda. But then I would see no Honda, only Hyundai cars. And then I'd be like, um, are you sure you didn't mean the blue Hyundai? And then he'd be like, send your traffic already. I already told you the blue Honda. And then he would go to the boss and complain that it took me too long to send traffic on my side. So then they fired me for negligence? I still don't understand the logic behind that. Like, even when they explained it, it made even less sense. Oh, look at that, another Hyundai. There are a lot of Hyundais in this parking lot. I guess Hyundais are pretty popular in uh, Emmaus. 
Oh, let's see. And it's a red one. Oh, uh, look at that. Let's place a red one down then. Now, you really want to be careful placing down cars because every car you place down, the game's going to have to render. And depending on what type of computer you have, it might make it a little bit slow. So I'm only going to place cars in this area of the parking lot. Oh, look at that. Another Hyundai. Not a Honda. I still can't believe I lost my job just because my co-worker couldn't tell the difference between a Honda and a Hyundai and blamed me for it, basically. I was so mad, I decided I would never uh, be a traffic controller again because that is just too much frustration. I can't deal with that. Anyway, I could not find a Hyundai um, van, so I'm going to substitute for a car. Wow, that car actually had a Pennsylvania license plate. You don't really see a lot of that detail in cars in this game most of the time. Oh, look at that! Yet another Hyundai! I don't think there are any black Hyundais in this game, so... I'll just substitute for another one. Uh, what in the world? That car is way too small to be correct scale. You know what? That one was probably made in um, Google SketchUp. Some of the cars there are either too big or too small. You have to make sure they're the proper scale before you export them. Always make sure you save the game often because this game has a habit of crashing to desktop randomly for no reason. Oh, look at that, a Nissan. There's got to be a Nissan available in this game, right? Probably not the exact same type of car. Well, let's look it up in the download station to see if such a car exists. Yeah, well, someone made a Maxima. It's probably not going to be that detailed. A lot of the cars aren't that detailed in this game. Well, that's detailed enough in my opinion, however. Make sure you lift the cars up, because a lot of them are lower than the street. <laughs> this guy seems to have a pickup truck and a trailer, so I place two of these on the parking area. Well, that's all I have so far. In the next video, we're going to be upgrading my LaGrange Kentucky route for Trains 2019 to fix the lighting issues I had in the past, because this route was originally made on Trains A New Era. Well, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.